writing and co-producing some of the other biggest hits. Yo, what's up? It's your homie, one thrill the player of the world famous multi platinum Grammy nominated 69 boys. You know, the guys that bought you Tootsie Roll, as well as writing and co producing some of the other biggest hits you've ever known, such as The Train and Space Jam. Now, in my thousands of concerts, I've worked with many other DJs and production companies, but none quite like for schools only. Simple or all out for schools only will bring an insane experience like no other to your school, but without making you go broke. This is more than just DJs. It's more like the whole production experience. You ready? Let's rock. The 4SO crew believes that music is the most important thing, but we get it. Radio edits just won't cut it. Their in-house producers will edit the songs as needed to make sure your dance standards are exceeded, but the students get what they want. Not only do you get squeaky clean edits, but even exclusive remixes. 4SO have DJs that have toured with national acts and even played at EDC, and that mixing experience will take your dance to the next level. The DJs take requests ahead of time via the 4SO hashtag campaign and compile a basic playlist so that you know what your school's going to vibe to. That being said, they'll take requests at the dance itself and make sure everyone, everyone gets something that they like. The floor won't stop moving. My group, the 69 Boys, had a huge role in bringing Miami bass nationwide. You can't have good dance music without bass. <laughs> Believe that. 4SO prides itself in boomy bass cabinets and clear vocals. The volume is perfect on the dance floor, but comfortable on the sidelines so the administrators won't get blasted by the music. Now let's talk lighting. This is what sets production companies apart from just some DJ with strobe lights. Four Schools only has the best lighting hands down. Get this, they have a tech whose job it is to synchronize the lights to the music the entire time. They have some of the most sophisticated software for this too. They also use LED technology that pulls less power and emits less heat. But more than just that, they can change the lighting to have your theme colors and patterns to customize your dance. Four Schools Only is the only school dance company in Florida that employs full-time laser safety officers. Why is this important? Their laser light shows are ridiculous and they're also synced with the lights, but lasers have a lot of government regulations and 4SO proudly commits themselves to safety. The best way to incorporate your theme is with video backdrops and video screens. Imagine 28, 56, even 72 feet. Imagine video map theme effects. Imagine whatever you want, these guys can make it come to life. Anything you want can appear on the screens. Yes, Four Schools Only has it all. Lights, lasers, special effects, amazing artists, pipe and drape, you name it. However, it all comes down to the music and these guys rock. Four Schools Only does not subcontract DJs, nor their techs for that matter. Their DJs have all been taught to exceed 4SO's high standard. These guys work exclusively with schools and teen events. You're talking about having a DJ who knows how to get the crowd hype, how to mix, and is backed by a company who will help you sell more tickets than ever. So the question remains, are you rocking with the best?
Here we go. I think we're here. I, I'm here. You're there. I am here. Oh, this is like awesome. This is, you know, this internet thing is amazing. And we I have, think it might catch on. We have Al Gore to thank. You know? <laughs> Al Gore. I'm so, I'm so happy. Me I'm, too. I'm glad. Without Al Gore. You and I would probably be doing something really constructive tonight. Absolutely. Like making like, money or I don't know. <laughs> fixing something that our wives have said, you know, that over there is still broken. Well, actually, my wife is delighted because she just found the Lifetime Movie Club on the Apple TV. It's like, ooh, this. So, <laughs> however, <laughs> so. I got to tell you, I actually like Lifetime movies and DJs. Before you all laugh, go look up the client list with Jennifer Love Hewitt. I've heard of that. Now that name has popped up before. Not the Jennifer Love Hewitt, Do but the client list. something way, way up, if you know what I. Anyways, uh, this is about schools, right? <laughs> exactly. We're talking schools tonight, and we'll be talking cat toys as Arnold. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Your cat in the background is having a great time. <laughs> oh, that's uh, fun. But yeah, we're going to talk tonight, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit about prom, as the prom seasons are just about ready to get kicked off around the country. We've got uh, people getting their final preparations and such up here in, in our world and Arnold Absolutely. when do you guys kick off with your prom season uh this week this is it wow <laughs> this, this week uh there's actually a couple of breaks in between because of testing testing really screwed us this year because they changed the schedule all around and I guess people don't think when they move schedules around and, and they stuck these poor advisors with terrible dates for uh you know for prom they don't have a lot of choices but you know it's gonna be a good season for us we're excited we've done a lot of things different this year we've dumped a um What's the uh, financial term? A shitload of money into uh, marketing, and it's really paid off for us this year. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, that's that's something that uh, one of the frustrations I have with some of the schools is that because of that advisor changing over every year, maybe every two years, depending upon your school. As you say, you're always investing in that the money into having the market to these schools. Even though I've been there, I still have to keep coming back and knocking on the door and saying, "Hey." I've done proms before. Oh, really? Wow. Have you ever worked with our school? Yes, for the last five years in a row. Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that. So today I met with one of the schools that I used to do them years ago. Then they went elsewhere. And then it's been the downhill spiral. And mm -hmm. the new advisor that I met with, he actually said, he goes, you know, he admitted, he goes, yeah, it's been a downward spiral. Um, he doesn't remember when they used us because, you know, he wasn't work doing that at that point. But I told him, like, you know, we have this thing called loyalty program. As long as you keep using us, if you're looking at that same package, you're going to pay the same rate. As a matter of fact, if you guys had never stopped using us, you'd be spending $1,500 less. He's like, are you kidding? I'm like, yeah, our prices go up, but they don't go up for our current clients. And then a lot of DJs look, what if business costs go up? In reality, business costs haven't gone up that dramatically much in the last five years. You know, now, granted, that's really depending on the market. But Florida's pretty violent as far as, you know, how things change and insurances and everything else. But while our costs have gone up, they haven't gone that terribly up. So I try not to raise the prices on my clients that have been with us for a while. Because, again, you know, it's, it's good karma both ways around. You know, now, if we, sure. do, if we do get to the point like, look, I can't offer this package to you anymore. It's, you know, this is our minimum now. It's still going to be a better value than what they paid before. And, and that's worked out really well, at least with... Give them an incentive to keep using the advisors or, you know, excuse me, keep using the same company, yeah. even with different advisors. What we get, though, is the political side of it, where the new advisor doesn't like the old advisors. So they try to do everything completely different. And that's really been a tough one for us. But, you know, I tell them every time and I joke, you know, I say it in a joking manner, but I'm dead serious. We'll be back. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. So actually, when you look at uh, look at the, the variety of DJs out there that are are. I'm doing school dances and yet have very little clue. It's, it's surprising me how, how to engage teenagers. You know, I actually have a rant episode that I'm going to, have to do because that's going to be like an hour long rant on why uh, most rant. Can you, what, what is this rant know, right? word well, you use? You know, okay. So I had a, I have a DJ that I'm doing some consulting with right now and he showed me his business plan. It's solid. He showed mm -hmm. me his pricing and packages. They're solid. He showed me, you know, the gear that he's using. It's more than solid. He goes, why can't I make money? And then I heard his mixing. I'm like, because you suck. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, this is horrible. I'm like, first of all, you don't have a mixed cloud. And maybe it's a better thing that you don't have a mixed cloud. Uh, but 
you got to look the part. You got to act the part. Most importantly, you got to sound the part. If you're mixing sounds like a trash can hitting, I don't know, a, give me something terrible, Nickelback. Then <laughs> <laughs> Nickelback playing on trash cans while drunk. Yeah. So and falling downhill. Yeah. So it, it's pretty much yeah. If your mixes sound terrible like that, no one's gonna hire you. Just straight up with that. And, and kids are starting. No, I hate saying kids. Teenagers are starting to call out DJs that don't mix. If you go on Twitter and you just search Did, DJ didn't mix, you're going to see a lot of people saying, I went to this club. I went to even prom. DJ didn't mix. Like, they, they know that. So that's a selling point. Can you believe it, John? Oh, Actually I'm sure. being a DJ is a selling point now. Like it, it, I, it sure, it surely would be, and that's uh, that's that's something that is is foreign for a lot of guys out there because they're like, oh, isn't mixing where I fade this one out and I bring this one up? No, this isn't mega seg. No. Well, I can say that now they have your new den on. Yeah, exactly. I, I watched exactly. that episode, <laughs> and I've and I've actually been I have been spending more time practicing on that to to get those things those little nuances down and I've listened it, to more new feels, music. And, it feels good, doesn't it? It is. It is a cool thing. I mean, one of the things I've I've felt is, and again, I was doing pretty much weddings for a long period of time. With Mega Sega, it was okay to do that. Yeah. And it worked okay. But you, you get after a while, you kind of get bored. You line up the music, and I've already set the segues. I know exactly when they're going to segue, and I, you know, I can shuffle the songs around, but I still know the song, and I know where it's going to segue. Well, then I got to find something else to occupy occupy my time because I'm, you know, then you feel like, yeah, oh, this is. You, know, you don't find that the when one you're thing, actively. The one thing I love about Segway and even Ots had it were the directives. And I really wish Virtual DJ would do that. Remember where you could tell it, you know, when you hit the, the, the next button, it would stop the song and cue up the next one instead of automatically going to the next song. Mm -hmm. I really wish Virtual DJ had that because when you have a remote, that was the coolest thing about Segway. Because I remember, or Segway, excuse me, Mega Seg. When I used Segway, ha, huh, when I used Mega Seg, that was back when I used my Wiimote to control my music and all that. So when I was on yeah. scene, I had my Wiimote and I can control it. And it was really cool. And I really wish Virtual DJ would do that. Now I have a different method, but it was just much easier that way. Yeah, yeah, that that is one of the few things. There's there's a couple of things with Mega Seg I miss. One of them is that. The second one is to be able to put a hard break in a playlist. Yeah. So as it's auto running, and if I want to make sure that okay, I can see on Mega Seg that the the end of the song will be at at six or five fifty nine and fifty seven seconds, I can put a hard a hard end there, and then it'll play. I can be over by the head table, and the music will fade out, and at six o'clock, and ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the head table, and we're going to be doing fun thing, you know, whatever. Yeah, you, you can't do that. Bride and groom. And virtual DJ. So. <laughs> Okay, but we, we'll, so, I digress. Yes. <laughs> we're getting off topic. So, no, that's, so, that's, 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 so that's we're going to talk happening. proms tonight. Um, yes, proms and the and mixing, moldy. The mixing side of it is, is definitely something I think, as you, you mentioned, the kids are getting into. Mm -hmm. How, what's, your, what's your take? Are kids into the big light shows? Like, you know, for, it seemed like for a while they were into the big, the video was a cool thing. Going back farther, big light shows were cool. Then it was the big video and, and creating that. Now, have we made the transition back to, a big light show and big video or what are you seeing from the kids? What's, you know, what's it, the big hook? It's really both. And the sales strategy should be based on sales tragedy, sales strategy. strategy. I need more of this. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. That the sales Arnold, <laughs> Arnold on high end Mountain Dew. That's really, that's a, good, that's, the that's a sign. It's going to be a good show. <laughs> the sales strategy should be based on what the feedback you get from the students, right? So if I go and I meet with the students and they say, oh, the DJ was great. We really liked the mixing. Okay, there's always a but. If there wasn't a but, you wouldn't be there. If they were really happy with their vendor, they wouldn't be looking elsewhere. So you got to find out what that but is, right? Oh, the mm -hmm. DJ was great and we loved him and he MC. Mm, but, and a lot of times I've had schools where I really can't get them to tell me what the bad thing is. So I'm just outright and I say, but, and they're like, what do you mean? But I'm like, I'm here for a reason. If you guys liked him and he's as great as would you guys say he is, you'd be silly not to book him again. You guys would be right. just downright stupid. So what's the one thing that he did wrong? Well, you know, we are looking for an all in one production company. Bingo. There it is. So we push a lot of that. Uh, we push a lot of having, you know, in, depending what, you know, what they need for the theme. Okay. Well, you need pipe and drape. Look, we don't subcontract pipe and drape. I don't subcontract lighting. I explained to them what subcontracting is, why I think it's a scam for most, uh, users, the DJs do. Sorry, but that's just how I feel. Um, so I push on that and then we talk about how that, you know, having a DJ 
and a lighting company that's all part of the same company gives you a better show. And I show them some of that, you know, a lot of video clips, a lot, not just photos, but videos that actually show how the lighting goes together with the music. And it really depends with the school. I mean, ultimately, whether it's a school or even wedding, I tell them, look, you guys could have the most beautiful light show in the world. You can be in the greatest venue ever. If your DJ sucks, you just threw all that money away. So ultimately, it comes down to the DJ. When you're choosing your package and everything that you want, you're not paying for the DJ. The DJ comes with the package and that's why we charge this minimum because this is how much we need for our DJs. Everything else is the lighting, the video screens, all that. So if you only spend $2,500 or $25,000, you're still gonna get the same quality of show from a musical sense. It's not like I'm gonna send you with a crappy DJ because you spent less money than this other school. And I really drive that point home because Especially if you go on, you know, uh, even with weddings, if you go like on Wedding Wire or not, you read about DJs who double book and then yep. send some horrible DJ to cover their event. And he was terrible and couldn't mix. And then they say, well, you get what you pay for. Well, yes. And with us, you do, but not in the sense of the actual performance. And it literally comes up to setting up the turntables, mixing right then and there. Like, look, this is what my guys can do. And we're the only company that's really doing that. So, of course, they're going to go for it. And I know that my guys, look, I know it sounds cocky, but I know my guys can mix better than anybody else in this in my area. I know that for a fact. Because if there was anybody else that could mix and does school dances better than my guys, I would have hired them a long time ago or bought them out, which has happened out, which has happened a couple of times, excuse me. So, I mean, I can say with full comments, like, look, my guys can mix like nobody else can. We don't pre-mix stuff. A lot of my guys make their own remixes. Some of my guys have opened up for major artists or major festivals. Like, we're the real deal. We're the real deal when it comes to DJs. We are the DJ that DJs want to have. And, and really pushing that. And again, not just even just schools. I know we're talking about schools, but I also push that for weddings and corporate events. Ultimately, they called us because they want to have a good time. They want to dance. They want a real DJ. And while emceeing and, and, you know, being a good host, while that's all important, nobody's ever going to say, man, I'll tell you what, I went to prom. The DJ was whack. He didn't play any good music. He didn't mix, but boy, he sounded so good on the microphone and he delivered the proper applause lines. And no disrespect to Randy Bartlett or anybody else, but the clients really don't give a crap about that if you can't mix. That's why it's called the 1% because that's 1% on top of good stuff. And that really applies for school dances. I had a DJ that I talked to that, you know, it's like, well, I'm really working on games. Like, get the hell out of here with that. You go up to any school and you tell a bunch of seniors you're going to play games, you're going to get booed right out Ooh, of that. Yep. Like, come on, dude. No, 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 no. So maybe middle schools, but not traditional games. Like if you're going to do a dance contest or something like that, sure, but not for a high school. Not yep, yep, that's definitely. Um, as you're talking about, about you know, creating that creating um, the, with the shows and such, these ki kids like an experience more than more than probably we did at our age. We would be accepting more of a whatever whatever was thrown at us to a point. Yep. But the kids today are wanting that experience. Is are you hearing that when you're meeting with these kids and talking prom with them? They want to create this wow moment. You know, it, it depends on the school and it really depends on the overall expectations they had in the past. You know, with this school, they admitted, look, we don't have a lot of money because you know, we had some extra expenses, whatever it is, but we know that we just want a really good experience. We know the DJ makes or breaks. If we can't afford lighting, that's fine as long as we can afford a good DJ. So when they saw that, look, under your budget, yes, you can afford a DJ. Yes, you can afford a lighting. Let's cut out the frou-frou crap and really worry about what matters, and that's your dance floor lighting, some basic decor lighting, and DJ. You don't need anything else. You don't. Plain and simple. And yeah. I mean, it was, a slam, it was a slam dunk sale, but they were on the same boat that I was or the same level of thinking as I was that, you know, look, it's really about the final experience that is delivered through the music. And our promo videos, everything really talks about that. And I found the same thing with my, the problems I've got booked this year is that we have in the past, we've actually done bigger shows at these schools, but because of the numbers being down and such, their budgets have been cut and they're cutting the frills. They yeah. want to basically, we want you and we, but you know, let's, let's cut down that light show and, and go to uh, just basically the, a little bit of ambient light around the dance floor and then the dance floor lighting. In the past, we've done up lighting throughout the whole room at the one school. The other particular school, uh, they wanted to remove video. They're like, you know, let's not do the two, the big screens. We're going to go without, we're just going to go with lighting and the dance because we would rather have the DJ type of thing. Like I've done at their homecoming mm -hmm. where we mixed and had a good time with it over having this full cool video thing, which is neat too. But 
they're just really looking at where they can spend their money to get the bang for it. And, and the kids are wanting the music side of it more than the, the wow factor. Well, it depends on the wow factor that you're delivering too. you know, when you're talking about wow factor, when you're coming, you know, especially when you're talking about lighting, they're no longer expecting just DJ lighting. I mean, look, no disrespect to anybody that's using basic spin and pukes, but if that's what you're bringing to a school dance, it's not going to work. Uh, John, I know that you're using DMX with the Airstream Bridge, so you know this better than everything else or than anybody else right now. Is like if you don't come in with some sort of control lighting, you're going to get sold out by somebody that does. I mean, being able to control the lighting, being able to tell a client, okay, so your colors are, you know, you're doing this and this theme. You know, we could do this and this with colors, the lights when people are coming in. We could do this and this with the king and queen. It's ultimately an, a theatrical production. A, a DJ with spin and puke lights is never going to be able to sell that. So if you both are great at mixing, but this guy doesn't have the theatrical background behind him, you're still higher than him ultimately. I mean, that, that that's... Selling school dances, and y'all can quote me on this, is a dick measuring contest. Who? No, it is. It is. It's who's got the most gear, who can handle their gear a lot better, and who can wiki wiki while playing with the gear. I mean, it's it's a joke, but it's just the honest truth. And even the schools have said, it's like, look, we want to see who can bring the most lighting to our dance. Okay, awesome. That would be us. And I funny, I want school asthma. They're like, well, how, you know, how can you say that confidently? Well, because I know my competition because they come up to me asking me for advice. I know what they have. Like, they, they can't touch us. Now, not every DJ can confidently say that, but that's fine. But you still got to know what your competition is doing because how are you going to sell against them? And I, I think this, this, the big difference between selling for weddings and selling for school dances, right? I'm not saying trash your competition. Don't. That's just a bad idea altogether for obvious reasons. But if somebody says, well, what do you have that the competition doesn't? And if you say, well, I don't study my competition, so I don't know. Really? Really? You guys don't think that Microsoft isn't just freaking Tom Brady and Apple trying to figure out what the heck they're doing next? <laughs> like, you, you better damn well know what your competition is doing. Otherwise, you're basically just saying, hmm, take somebody else's money because I have no idea. I'm freaking clueless. If you don't know your market, not just your client, but your competition, your business is going to fail. You got to know who your client, who your uh, competition is, both friendly and and unfriendly because I don't care what anybody says. There's always somebody in your competition that doesn't like you and wants to see you crush like a bug. Oh yeah, for sure. If you've been in business for over like 10 hours, there's someone out there. So looking at your budget, I'm our budget, your comments, I'm loving these comments saying the local high school budgets are less than this and that. I'm going to tell you right now, they're lying to you. Okay. I mean, I would know. I don't go to the national conferences and talk to schools from around the nation or anything. But let me tell you the real truth. They are telling you that because that is all they think you are worth. Now, I don't mean you specifically as a DJ, but the DJs that they've seen, if they're saying we only have $600, they're saying we haven't seen anything worth over 600 bucks. Because I guarantee if that ballroom is charging them $10,000 and they want that ballroom, they're going to pay $10,000 for the ballroom. And it's none of that, none of my uh, backyard crap. Look, all schools... The way that it works is, right, you've got some federal grants and your federal money. That federal money can't really go to school dances because it has to pay for teachers, for books, etc. Likewise, the money that the students raise don't all necessarily go to the dance. They have lots of projects they have to do. And I actually did a seminar to the students saying, look, there's a lot of companies that hear schools and they automatically think, ching, ching. And I'm one of yep. them, but I'm not going to take advantage of the schools. I know some companies that charge more than I do and they get work one time because they did not deliver a product that was worth that price tag. But at the same time, if they're telling you they only have $600, they're lying to you. Just they're straight up lying to you. Do the math and you'll be like, huh, this isn't making any sense. Now, there are some schools that may say, like, for example, the one I met with. I know for the fact that they have more money than what they told me they have. But when you take into account what they're using the money for as far as other things and trying to catch up and keep their books, you know, so they're not going broke. Okay, yeah, you're actually giving me a good number. But every time mm -hmm. that you're at a sales meeting, somebody's selling somebody. So either you're getting sold or they're getting sold. I'm not yep. going to be sold. Like I do this for a living. I'm not going to be sold. And, you know, I, I – I've even outright call. I don't want to say called out some schools, but when they say, "Well, you know, we don't have a lot of money. We have this and this much," I'm like, "How'd you come to that budget?" Just, I just want to real quick figure this out. You guys are selling this many a number of tickets at this much. Your hotel charges this much, and I know that because I talked to all the hotels. I know how much hotels charge, so I have a good mm -hmm. roundabout figure. Again, that's part of knowing your market. So, 
what is it that you guys, you know, are, and you don't want to, you don't want to say, well, what are you guys spending your money on that you're not telling me? Like, okay, so where's your money going? So let's try to figure out how to come up with a budget so you guys can have what you want without going broke. And then they'll be a little bit more apt. From when, when I first started doing this, schools did not want to tell me their budget at all. And they would make up a really low number because there was a local company that would basically just m take the regular package and change a couple of things and charge that price. So suddenly that same package went 5000 one week and $1,000 the next week. And people right. ultimately caught on. So the schools were really scared to give out that information. And that's in my market. But guess what? My market talks to this other market, which talks to this other market. Again, these schools all get together several times a year. And they share these things. So when I say that they're full of crap, if they're telling you their budget's only $600 or you're lying, one of the two, it's because this is what they're telling me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, when I did the national conference, I was talking with a uh, school in uh, Arizona. I, yeah, it was actually Arizona. It was really cool because they actually had like Walter White shirts, but they spun it off to be about Student Government Association. I don't know how you spin meth into SGA, but it was, no, it was a really cool short. And it was really cool because this kid's actually a DJ. Like he's an aspiring DJ and he follows my videos. Dude, I recognize you. I'm like, no freaking way. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and again, it's one of those things, you know, that we can't take for granted that people recognize us. But the fact that it was uh, not, well, I mean, he's a DJ, but not like a DJ DJ. Um, but anyways, we were talking back and forth and. You know, I'm like, look, what market are you in? And he told me to sit. I'm like, look, I've heard from a few DJs that it's really bad there. So what exactly is going on? And he told me, all right, he goes, look, he goes, we have the money, he goes, but we spend it on other things because these dances aren't making any money because nobody wants to go to these dances because the DJs suck. And DJs don't want to hear, perhaps I'm not making a lot of sales because I suck. DJs, yeah. if you can't get a school to give you the money that you think you're worth, maybe it's because the market is saying you're not worth that money. So what can you do to fix that? And a lot of DJs get offended by that. Oh, I'm excellent. My clients say I'm great. Yes, the clients that are paying you $600 when they should be paying you $2,500 are saying you're great. But if you want the $2,500 clients to say you're great, you need to change something to push away the $600 client and attract the $2,500 client. You can't sell chicken nuggets and filet mignon in the same restaurant. Just not possible unless you're serving kids. Which you could, but... Uh, Arnaldo, check your uh, check the audio input on Zoom. Yeah, I just saw that. Check check yep. one two. I'm good on my end over here. Well, no, no. Go and check and see if the auto uh, the auto level. So down by the microphone, there's a little arrow pointing upwards. Yeah, click that. Says, go to audio options. It says AG03. Yeah, it's coming in full over here. Is the automatic adjust microphone setting checked? Uh, let's see. That's what I think we might be having. Is that is it hears you and I think it goes down and then it. Slowly comes back. Okay. Automatically join audio by computer when doing a meeting. New. Right above that, there should be a line that says automatically adjust microphone. No, setting. I just have leave computer audio. And then if I go to audio options, it just doesn't give me any option like that at all. Really? Huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me check here real quick. Oh, you know what? Hang on one second. Let's try this. Check, check one, two. Hopefully you guys can all hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. It's just, it goes okay. up and up and down. So, okay. I think I got it. I got it. It's uh, the new version. Uh, put it in the testing section. It's no longer in the main one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's it. All right. Cool. Thank yeah, you guys you for letting it. us know. Yeah, they found it. Special. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, real quick, John, somebody asked a great question. Owen Blevins over on my channel asked what everybody's charging for the mini thons. Guys, this has been a big sweeping thing with, uh, especially with National Association of Student Councils. We just did Florida Association of Student Councils. And this was a big thing where, uh, at least here, they're working with UCF, which is Nightthon. And it's basically a dance marathon, raising money for the Children's Miracle Networks. I'll okay. be honest with you, I don't charge that much for it. I charge less than $100 an hour because it's for a good cause. That's really it. If any of the schools use me for homecoming and prom, I just charge them the cost of paying my DJ. And everything else is pretty much included. Now, if they want lighting and all that, you know, it's still really prorated. Stuff like that, yeah, it could be a good money-making opportunity. But my company's big enough to the point that I want to give something back to the schools. So that's one of the ways that we do it. It definitely does help because if you do stuff like text to screen, you can start collecting a lot of names and really be able to market yourself to other schools doing that. So, uh, yeah, the, the dance marathons, I refuse to make more than, you know, I mean, I think the most expensive ones like $1,500 and it's a huge setup, but again, it's only because we choose to put our advertising budget towards that. Uh, you know, to give back because again, Children's Miracle Network, it's good for yeah. them. Yeah. Very so, cool. 
Uh, hold on one second. I'm wow. There's a lot of freaking questions in here too. Like, I don't know if you've noticed. Like, they're coming. Yeah, just just calling, <laughs> following along. A lot of discussion about uh, some of the smaller smaller schools and such that don't have the money. And and I think Arnold, you made a good point that it's really about where they're budgeting their money. Because I've yep. got a a small school that will have about eighty students. Yep. And they will charge the kids forty some dollars a, a person. So eighty kids times the forty bucks, you've got three thousand over three thousand dollars there for that. Plus they've had some fundraisers that they've they've done over the years. So they're probably in this case, it, again, it's not a big school. They're working with about a five to seven thousand dollar budget each year. Now from that, all they do is pay the inter- the DJ. They have to pay a little bit for the school, the janitor fee because of the extra time with mm-hmm. that. And then they have to decorate the gym. Absolutely. And so there are years where that gym is decorated very poorly because they're spending more money with the DJ. And there's years where the gym is incredible. It depends on the advisor. And that's where really being a production company just helps because then you can make money off that decor. So whether they just go DJ or decor or both, you can make money. And if they have already DJ, you can still sell them on decor. Um, Aaron mentioned, actually, this is a really good topic, John. Aaron mentioned that he's in Utah and it's a more conservative area. Many can't attend the dances because of restrictions uh, from parents, you know, because Oh, yeah, they don't yeah. Dance. Utah, you've got a really strong um, religious community out there. Absolutely, because, you know, even though David danced naked before the Lord, I guess it's different, you know, at a school dance. No, so... <laughs> well, for, for, I, I, I actually had maybe a, it's not. I had, I had a wedding where nobody danced for religious reasons. I'm like, listen, you're not grinding on each other. Jesus is not going to send you to hell for dancing to We Are Family. You'll be fine, my guy. Um, if you want to, you want to take off your clothes and dance naked like David did. And they laughed about it and they're like, all right, we'll go and do some line dances. But I'm really glad that Aaron brought that up because actually we are making a, I don't want to say a boatload, but we are making a really nice market with these smaller private schools. One of the schools that I booked, they just needed just some basic lighting and photo booth, John. By the time I got done, we did lighting, pipe and drape, photo booth and DJ. They've never had a DJ before. Ever. Wow. And it's not because she, and you know, she says, she goes, look. I, you know, I'm religious, but I dance. She goes, but this is a, um, oh my goodness, non-denominational school. So you get some people that are really, really, really strict and some that don't. So it's really hard to balance, you know, the parents and everything else. So this was the first school where I say, okay, well, here's everything that I recommend playing. You tell me what you want, what you don't want. We'll go from there. First time I ever let a school control a playlist, but for obvious reasons. And you know what? They had a great time. I had a great time. Honestly, it was one of my favorite homecomings. And I've got multiple schools now that are saying, okay, well, look, you can actually do these really clean dances where there's parents there. It was only an hour of dancing hours. You know, there was dinner. There was a bunch of other activities in between, but they had an hour of dancing. The first time they ever had a DJ, it opened up a new market, but because there are smaller schools that don't necessarily have a football team, they are much easier to work with on the schedules. So I can take my not, not as busy season. Okay, I only got four homecomings or five homecomings on that weekend, so I can put a couple of those schools there. So, Aaron, you can definitely make a market, but if you're approaching it like a traditional DJ, you're not. you got to make the market where there isn't one. Uh, maybe. And where there isn't one, meaning looking at the, the going to some of these schools that don't have anything or yeah. adding production to no, I mean, or both. whatever, whatever they don't have, make the market. Um, again, let, let me let, let, let's pick on the Davies brothers for a second, not pick, but use them as an example. There was a, there was one time, John, where DJs didn't bring lighting to our events. And these guys said, what if we had lights that moved to the music and people like preposterous poppycock. Because back then everybody was British, and <laughs> <laughs> in Southern California, sure. Yeah, and these dudes took a light and they took that dancing Santa that went to the music, ho ho ho, and they danced to you know Coca Cola Santa dancing to music. Somehow took the energy, put it on a light, and they made the first light that reacted to music, and they created a market. Well, if they can do that to DJs who are stubborn little, you know what? Then why couldn't you create a market where there isn't one? If you're hearing the well, the school dances here don't do this and this. No, they don't. Nobody's just. There hasn't been a good enough salesperson. Look, if you're a good enough salesperson, you should be able to sell anything. The most important part is to have integrity. Don't rip off a school and don't sell something you wouldn't stand behind. You know, I've had mm-hmm. schools ask me, well, do you do this and this? No, because I think it's a rip because I think it's a waste of money. I'm personally not going to offer that. I can connect you to somebody, but I'm very honest about it. And likewise, if I can find a discount to save them money, I'm going to tell you, hey, look, if you guys go with this package, um, I actually am using it the, the night prior, so I don't have to reload a van. I'll save you a couple hundred bucks. I could have just as easily said, oh, you should go with this package and, co- uh, you know, pocket that extra 200 or 300 or whatever. 
but that's not how I roll. And I believe in karma. And I believe in running a business, you know, around karma. Don't get bit in the back or in the butt, yeah. excuse me. But that being said, create a market. If you have schools telling you, oh, you know, lighting, lasers, what's that? <laughs> Great. I'm going to be the first one to market with lasers. Mm -hmm. and, and it works. You know, once you get past proof, proof, why can't I talk today? Once you get past proof of concept, you can really do some incredible things if you're a good salesperson. And if you can't get schools to pay for it and you don't suck as a DJ, step your sales game up. That's the only thing I can say because it's not the school. I'm going to write a, a new book. It's called It's Not the Schools. It's you. It's you. So, <laughs> and and DJ, DJs get their feelings hurt about that. But honestly, business is not a thing to get your feelings hurt. It's just the honest truth. People are not going to pay for a DJ that doesn't mix in this day and age. People are not going to pay for a DJ. And look. If you're getting older, that's fine. Honestly, I dread the moment I hit 40 or 50. I do because I know I'm not going to be able to walk in with the same sales technique. But if you have a long white beard going all the way down, shave that crap. Dye your hair. I know that sounds horrible, but this is this is an ageist business. You know, and unfortunately, yep. the young survive a lot faster than older people will. And I'm going to be teetering on that. I mean, I'm 31 now. So. I only have like maybe nine useful years in my own personal sales strategy before I'm like, okay, time to come up with something new. So what's Marcello mm -hmm. up to? Let me just do whatever he's doing because the guy looks like he's 20 right now. So <laughs> I'm just going to do that. But I mean, it sounds horrible and I know it hurts feelings, but it's the truth. Just checking out the chat board here. Um, you know, I don't want to hear anything from Adam talking about how he misses this business. I don't even think this dude is old enough to rent a U-Haul yet, and he's selling, like, gold mining <laughs> equipment. Uh, I, I, Adam should be doing a seminar. That guy is impressive. I, I, I'm not sure who Adam is. Adam Parrott, I think you've seen him. Uh, you might have seen him a few times posting, but, um, I mean, I've known this kid before. He even really started pushing school dances, and he started doing some big school dances, and now somehow he's selling, like, excavators and all sorts of construction equipment. And I mean, he's young. I don't even know how old he is right now, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, but anyhow. somebody, uh, Cameron mentioned, of course, the school districts have the, once you get over a thousand dollars that it has to be approved by the, the, uh, uh school board. Of course That's actually does. somewhat common. Yeah. And especially in an area in which I eat a geographic region where they're used to, in this case, DJs who are all in that four to five hundred dollars. That the schools can find a four to five hundred dollars DJ for their events on a regular basis. That's so. the policy. But once <laughs> they start finding DJs and other vendors where they're having to waste too much time at a school board meeting to approve a thousand dollar expenditures, yep, that'll be gone so very very quickly. We actually, well, it's very common here. You have to get three quotes for anything over a certain price, depending on the district. And I actually talked to one of the districts. I'm like, so why do you guys do that? Well, you know, we want to compare apples to apples. I'm like, okay, cool. But you are aware that lighting is very different from one to the other, right? Or if a DJ says they have lasers, it's different from one to the other, or the DJ alone. I mean, and, and I, I, I told this to one of the girls and <laughs> I had a good enough report that I could ask her this or tell her this. I'm like, so if I find somebody that says they can do bookkeeping for half the price of you, then as a taxpayer, I can vote you out, right? And she goes, wait, what? I'm like, that's pretty much what you guys are doing. <laughs> so it actually got her attention. She goes, well, we really don't know what we're looking for. I'm like, you really should trust the schools on this. The only thing that you guys really need to worry about is do they have the insurance? And I told them the difference between DJ insurance and actual professional insurance because DJ yeah. insurance doesn't cover half the crap that we guys do. I'm going to tell you right now, DJs, you'd be shocked if you knew what your insurance company doesn't cover for you. <laughs> um, but Hopefully they never have to find out the hard way. I'm telling you, and one day they will. But, you know, uh, I tell them the difference between the insurance, the variances when it comes to lasers and all that. I'm like, and yes, in reality, if you see two companies offering the exact same thing and one's like three or $4,000 more, it's definitely worth asking for more, but you can't itemize by gear. Cause I have one school's like, well, we'll just ask for the gear. Okay. Awesome. And I, I just powdered off some basic gear and I'm like, do you understand? Did you understand any of that? No. Okay. So you're going to add that workload to you. I'm like, the only way to really do it is either you need to interview each DJ individually and ask them for the paperwork that you need, or you need to trust the schools to do the right decision. If they screw up, you're going to hear it in the long run. But if you find a DJ that's cutting corners, they're probably cutting corners with something that you require that's important, like work in, or workman's comp. So, I mean, we've really gone on this. And the other tip that I've told, you know, other DJs, like just make your itemized list as detailed as possible. Don't worry about listing gear, but really bring down everything. Do you help, you know, um, advertise? Okay, great. 
You're going to help with advertising. You write that in there. Every little thing. Even if, oh, it's included with the package. Doesn't matter. You write it down. The better looking your proposal is, the better chance you'll have of flying through that approval process. I know we're one of the more expensive companies in my area. And you know what? I don't have counties shutting down our proposals because our proposals are very well outlined and they know what they're getting with us. And once you're at the level that, you know, four schools only has been blessed to be in, the counties know who we are and they know what to expect when they work with us. And they know that if they ask us for forms that we have a dedicated CFO, then she'll immediately send them whatever forms they need. There's no lollygagging with our business. We're, we try to be faster than the district. We are. We're faster than the districts are because it's the government. They move slowly, yeah. but we're faster than they are. And we stay one step ahead. So that saves them a lot of time because they've got a lot more to worry about than which DJ company should they hire? <laughs> Arnaldo, Aaron made a nice, an interesting point here, and I want to talk about this. He, he made the statement, uh, I wish I could move, rebrand, oh. you know, rebrand to a different, basically move to a different market. Uh, and granted, there are going to be some areas in which if you're, more, if you're in a very rural area and you go to a more urban area, there's going to be more opportunity, but you also have more competition in those, those areas. I don't think that, that money and, and uh, location really completely go together. I mean, there's a level of that, but oh, I, 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 I'm sure there's schools in your market that have 500 plus kids coming to the dance and they're telling that we can't pay over $400 for a DJ. You know, it's because that's what everybody else has been spending or because they haven't seen anybody worth over $400. You know, that's the crazy thing about Florida, because in Florida, I can be in a really high class area where people are spending hundred, you know, $100,000 just for, you know, basic like one bedroom house. And they're spending a quarter million dollars if they even want just a basic, you know, one family unit to an area where you can get a really nice house for less than $100,000. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy how Florida works out, but because of that, I've seen both sides of the market. And I can tell you right now that I have the smaller schools. Those smaller schools come to us. Are they spending as much money as their bigger schools? No, but it's all about finding that equilibrium price range. You know, I may have a $10,000 school, but it requires five people to set up. And my $2,500 school only requires two people to set up in a much smaller truck and a third of the capital. Hmm, what's making me more money in the long run? It's yeah. not necessarily how much you're charging, but how much you're spending for everything that you send out. And you got to keep track of that, you know? Oh, for sure. Uh, and and we'll, we'll have to go over the tire thing too, but you know, you got to take account for everything that can go wrong in your business, not just how much money you're spending on people and capital in general. So let's, let's, let's segue because we're running, uh, we're getting our, our time down there. Yeah. Um, emergency th th ah. things happen. Ah. Let's put it ah. that way. Things happen. I am so lazy when it comes to preparation. Okay, so we did the uh, FASC, the Florida Association of Student Councils. And I told my wife, okay, we need a, you know, we checked our oil. We make sure everything was good. I'm like, you know, I should bring a jack just in case. I'm like, eh, it'll be fine. What are the chances a tire is going to blow out? They're brand new tires, except for the trailer. The trailer had older tires, but it doesn't get driven around often. It's never sat on dirt. It shouldn't have dry rot. What I did not know is that, A, how old the tires were, because nobody told me, and B, that dry rot sets in after a month in Florida. I'm like, son of a gun. So we completely just, we're driving all of a sudden, and it, it was, <laughs> no, yeah. no, it wasn't even that, John. The tire, oh, you didn't. It blew. I mean, it ripped off the whole fender, lights, the side. I mean, this. Yeah, yeah I saw I saw the it, pictures. It, it was bad. And the trailer just, you know, like Michael J. Fox itself around. Oh, that's so horrible. Whatever. Wow. That, now we just offended. Gosh, I, I haven't even counting how many groups you're offending tonight. Uh, guys, if you're offended, please uh, write me at, no, just kidding. Um, yeah. No, so anyways, I mean, that whole thing was gone. So, you know, we called a company, uh, a roadside assistance company, not forgetting that I was in Live Oak, Florida. Live Oak is basically a... Um, it's where every Walmart is a tractor supply. Like you pulling here. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, <laughs> we're there. You know, it's like a population of 32, which makes a full set of teeth there. Um, but anyway, so, you know, we, we, we have somebody come in. They change the tire out. And I'm like, do you have a second tire by any chance for the other side? Just in case. Uh, no, we don't have any more. I'm, you know, I'm like, am I okay on that tire? Does it look like it's dry rot? No, you should be fine. Okay. I should have gotten that tire changed. Now, the funny part is, I blew a tire exactly two years ago in the same freaking spot. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Same spot two years ago, I blew a tire on my van. So tire on the trailer blows out, you know, on the way back, everything's okay. Not even, I think within a 50 mile radius, 
Boy, I'm like, son of a bitch. I'm like, this isn't even funny right now. So we changed the tire out, and that's when we realized that we were at Live Oak. I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to go pick up. They actually had the trailer tires already in the rim, ready to go. We bought the jack and everything else, and we just changed out the tire. But it's funny because then there's all the Captain Obvious DJs, you know, like, well, you should have had a spare tire. Dude, I have a spare tire. How the hell am I going to put a spare tire in a trailer? It's just going to blow right out. A spare tire in a trailer isn't when the trailer is fully loaded. So that's not going to help. And even if I did, I wouldn't have enough room for a jack because you can't just put one jack underneath. You got to have two or that trailer is going to tilt over. I don't know how it is in your area, John, but the highways here were built by meth heads. So a normal highway is like this. Florida's highways are like, like this right here. Right, so you've got like three different pieces of concrete. So when the tire was pulled over, the shoulder on uh, the side of the highway was the shoulder. So the whole trailer was like this. So if I jacked the trailer too much, you already know what's gonna happen. Oh yeah, so for sure. It wasn't like you could just easily change it. So we had to go back and forth, and we were able to get it. But uh, AAA sucks. Ooh, we don't we don't uh, do trailers. We don't do what the hell do you guys do exactly? Uh, you know. That being said, DJs. This is my piece of advice today, and I promise you that when this happens to you, you'll be like, man, I should have listened to Arnaldo and John. Um, if you have a single axle trailer, get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Because a tandem axle trailer would have stopped that crap. At least I could have been able to drive somewhere, get the tire changed out. Again, yeah. if you have a single axle trailer and your livelihood depends on that trailer, sell it right now. That trailer looks like the end of Are We Done There? Or are, we, are We There Yet? Excuse me. Remember when Ice Cube's SUV was just completely trashed? That's exactly what that trailer looks like. Oh, it looks horrible. Yeah. Yeah. The sides are, are, you know, looks like 10 miles of bad road there for sure. Lee. Yeah. That, that trailer is a bigger disaster than a Florida voting box. So it's, it's pretty bad. Um, so that's one aspect with the trailer. Now the second aspect, yeah. and this is what I've had happen, is is that trailers, the little the hitch hitch a ball hitch on a trailer has some adjustment in it. And over time as you use them and they get yanked around and such, they will the coupler sometimes will actually relax a little bit. I don't know, Arnold, if you've ever played with it, but you can actually go take a socket and there's a, a lock nut on the bottom of most of the hitches. So that when it's closed and latched. You should be able to basically get a, a little bit of movement, but you shouldn't be able to get too much movement out of that that, really? ball, that ball hitch. So what you end up having to do with after a period of time, one of the maintenance things is to go down there and take a ratchet. You got to use a bigger one because this is a lock nut under there, but you have to snug that up just to you know, give it a little oh, bit yeah. of a turn to tighten up. Well, I found out the hard way. Oh, no. I just... Yeah. <laughs> so I'm headed down the road and we're late for uh, setting up the day before prom. And hit a bump on the road because, you know, in Minnesota, everything, every, every half mile, there's a huge bump at this time of the year or the next month. Hit the bump, trailer bounces, bounces, and then it pops off the hitch on the truck. Of course, it has chains. So it's like, well, oh, my gosh, as I'm watching the trailer, wang, wang, bang, 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 boom, and then back, it hits into the back of the truck. And I think at the time, the truck oh. was maybe, maybe about two or three years old, the big, the big pretty truck. And it cranks into the truck and it's like crap. So you apply the brake and you slowly pull over with it up against the truck. So at least I knew it was, you know, kind of containing the trailer a little bit. And sure enough, it's got some scars on the back end of the truck and the trailer had caught the hitch in right, right above where the, the uh, trailer hitch was. It pierced the, the, by the, um, the siding side of that and such. But yeah, the trailer, they will come off. So you, that's an area you guys need to check is that hitch also. And if you're, if you're not comfortable with it, take it to, most any um, any shop will be able to go in there and they'll look at it and they'll tighten it or if it needs a tightening and if it doesn't have one it can be tightened yep <laughs> and the, it's a single axle trailer get I, rid of it <laughs> i i had yeah i had a beauty pageant where somebody stole the freaking pin for the hitch so oh, I'm, yep. I'm pulling I've, out and the whole trailer goes boom I'm like what the hell was that i'm like oh there's no pin the whole ball everything comes out i'm like freaking florida so when you when you are at a show do you is there any gear left in your trailer Sometimes. Uh, okay, not, so I, I try to have it every time where it's completely empty when I had that because we were having a rash of people in the area up in, and again, we're small town Minnesota out in, in our area. People were breaking into DJ trailers at gigs looking for any gear. So we're in there doing weddings and such and they're out there. So I ended up getting to the point with my trailers that w instead of having a lock on the actual back end of the trailer, it was just a, a, little, um, a little clip. So people could come in there, clip, open it up. Oh, there's nothing in there. Yeah, we, I mean, we have the lock, and then we also have the trailer hitch and everything else. And while you can't do this at a school, there's a really easy way to prevent people from stealing your stuff. 
if you get my drift. Um, oh, I'm going to tell you right now. No, no, no. I'm gonna Is hold that, wait, oh, combination lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what you meant. Uh-huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. And that there did it down with that one. No, nine millimeter gauge. Get that four to five. You... I saw propane and propane accessories. Stop. I keep mentioning system, putting your tires on on a single axle trailer about every two years. That's probably the best way to do it. The second area I would do is is like we do on our camper. When we pull it anywhere, we have covers on it. As soon as it's into a location, we're covering those tires just to keep them from sun damage or or what have you. But you eventually will have dry rot. Our last set of trailer tires on our camper. The side walls look beautiful, the, lots of tread, but if you look between, in the treads, mm-hmm. you saw little cracks. And I wouldn't be surprised, Arnaldo, although that's exactly what you had on yours, and that's what uh, where it went. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, that, that, and I, I'll be honest with you, I overloaded this trailer at least by 500 pounds, and I was going 75 miles an hour the first time. So really? Maybe, you drive that, fast? That, that could have been it. So, well, 75 hours, guys. For, well, 75 miles doesn't sound really fast on a trailer. That's way too much. <laughs> way too way much. Way too much. Well, <laughs> unless you got a really, really kick butt trailer. But honestly, what, what you describe as far as people stealing gear, that's why you don't label a car. I just, I don't get it. I don't know why people label their cars. Nothing says break into me like putting your freaking company name on a trailer. I try to find the most podunk ass looking vans. Matter of fact, if I can get a van that says free candy, I know nobody's gonna touch that van. I don't care. I'm not. <laughs> No, nobody, nobody's gonna come up like you know. Prom was great. The DJ was amazing. The lights were on point. But that that van though, like, oh, they didn't have Starburst, see? and my butt hurts. No, <laughs> like nobody, nobody cares what the hell's in your van. Just, just don't put a freaking label on it. Plus, I don't know if you know this, John, but I have really bad road rage, and I know we gotta talk about Mulvey soon. But I, I have really bad road rage. And not like undeserved road rage, but you cut me off. I'm going to try to run you off the side of the road. And well, that's, that's what they get for being in a bus. I, I can attest to that. I rode with you, although you were not driving, but you still managed to have the road rage. And yeah. you still were trying yeah, to figure that, out a way to get the car to cut them that, off. So no, the thing is, I don't want to have road rage, run somebody off the road, tell them to go after mother, and then on the side, hire us for your school day. It's like, wait a second. Because I can tell you, whenever somebody runs me off, the first thing I do is, how's my driving? Oh, I'm going to tell you how's your driving right now. I'm going to call yeah, your mother if her on, all, on there. Yeah, there so, uh, True North, no. Um, no, there are very few. I, I'm one of the actually few that have advertising on their trailer, or I did. Well, that's why people uh, are breaking into your stuff, John. Well, no, I, my trailers never were bothered, but others oh. were. So I was I was fortunate uh, with that stuff, but I also did, I don't leave anything in there. So uh, let's talk. We got a couple of minutes to talk mobile beat, and I'm not yes. gonna jump here. Mobile beat, it's exciting. Are you going? I won't be there. I won't be there this year. I'm going to be coming down the week after for the That's photo booth right. expo. That's right. I might be there. So I have a seminar. I don't know if you know about this. Really, you Super speak? Exciting. Yeah, yeah, I do actually. I talk and. Uh, there, there may be a rant in there, so that's fun. And actually, <laughs> real quick, before we do that, Owen brought up the alarm. Just a quick thing. Guys, if you do not have alarm in your vehicle, your insurance will not cover you. And that's including your trailer. So, yes, you need to have an alarm in your car and your vehicle or your insurance won't cover you. That's- and you've got to have the proper alarm with, depending upon your insurance company. If you're using one that's one that was connected with the national associations yep. – it's got to be the approved alarm system, or it will not. Be yep, covered. I have my uh, I have like a, my uncle in there with a. Ch-ch-ch. Oh, the That's combination the lock. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, yeah. So I'm gonna be doing a uh, what's it called seminar, and it is sponsored by ADJ, but it doesn't mean that it's a product demo. I I hate those kind of seminars. This is not a timeshare thing. I, John, I don't know about you, but I'm so tired of seminars that are just a bunch of frou frou that actually don't show you how to make money. I'm so tired of the seminars like, well, you should make more money. You should charge more. How? I'm not going to tell you. Like, F you, guy. Like, come on. You should be able to just feel your way through it, man. <laughs> it's like, look, again, I love Mark. He's a good guy. But you can't just say, I'm a $1,500 DJ and charge $1,500 if you suck. Uh, so this seminar is really going to talk about where's lighting taking us. John, I mean, you've seen it. You've done coverage for so many shows. Lighting has changed so much more in the last five years than ever. Yeah. Like just the insane amount of jump that you have that we have gotten on lights. So it's going to talk about lights, video, how to stay ahead of your competition. If your competition's ahead of you, how to sell around them so you can still get your fair piece of the pie because that's really what's made four schools only 
you know, as successful as we have been. There's bigger companies out there than us, way bigger. There's guys with way bigger systems, way better lighting. But we know how to sell what we have and how to stay ahead of our competition and offer even some technologies that they don't have to just really stay ahead. So I'm excited about that. Also, I'm excited about Paul Oakenfold. That's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah, that should be fun. It should be a, a good show. It always, always a good time to get together with friends and such in Vegas. So I'll definitely, definitely be missing it this year, but that's unfortunately how things came together. So it is what it is. So it is, it is gang. We got to wrap things up. We are just about up to our next show here and I need a little bit of time to, to uh, switch things over. Arnaldo, thank you very much, my friend. I thank enjoyed you. our time together. At, same here. And guys, remember masterschooldances.com. All your school dance questions, that'll answer it. It's awesome. Those links are all down in the description below the video here on YouTube. I've got actually Arnaldo's got a, a his a new website. You guys got to check out. Yes. Uh, geared, geared first is out there. The, all the links are down below. Go check those out. He's been working on some new projects and there's some really cool stuff out there. So check it out. Awesome. Um, I'll be back in about nine minutes with, uh, with the crew tonight. And we're going to be doing kind of an open mic night tonight. So we'll see you in just a few. So I can ask where do babies come from? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, okay. And we're out. Yep. So, hold on. I'm trying. I'm trying to log off. I guess I should have uh, had a um. Uh, Always. Oh,